Hi guys, it's Miss Livingston. I just wanted to read you guys a quick story for today since we started coming back to school and I know how much you guys love read alouds. And I wanted to include my favorite pup, Ellie, because this is a story all about dogs. All right, we're gonna get started. We're gonna read half today and then I'll finish the second half on Friday. All right, here we go. Bye, baby. It's a beautiful day at Bark Park. The sun shone brightly, but it wasn't too hot. The nice breeze blew through, making Scout's large, fawn-covered ears twitch. It was the perfect day to sit in the shade and munch on blueberries, Scout's absolute favorite snack. And maybe, just maybe, she thought, a mystery might pop up. Scout came to the dog park every day, and all the dogs knew her. She was the smallest dog in the park, but what Scout lacked in size, she made up for in smarts. Scout was something of a dog detective, and as luck would have it, Bark Park always seemed to have a mystery that needed solving. Scout stood on a bench, eating blueberries from a little tin bowl and surveying the dogs who had already gathered in the large, dusty play spot. Maggie, the golden doodle, was lying on her back with her favorite ball in her mouth. Her legs kicked in the air like she was dancing upside down. This is the best, Maggie said around the ball. Maggie was rarely without a ball of some kind, but the red squishy plastic one was her favorite. Maggie bicycled her legs one more time and then jumped up and ran in wide circles at top speed. Even on the hottest summer day when every other dog was panting in the shade or slurping from the water fountain, Maggie had endless energy. How she managed to do that was one mystery that Scout couldn't solve. A few feet from Maggie in the shade of the biggest tree in Bark Park lay Gus. So here's all the characters from the story. So first we have Scout, who's our small little mutt who's eating some blueberries. Then laying in the dirt is the Golden Doodle with her ball. Then we have Rocky the Great Dane. That's a really big type of dog. Then we have Sprinkles, and he's a grumpy terrier mix. I can tell by his face that he is grumpy. Then we have Tippy the Squirrel, Abigail the Crow, and then last we have Gus laying in the dirt, and he snored through his short, wide nose. He was an English bulldog who had buried more toys than he could count, and he was by far the oldest dog at the park. Sprinkles entered through the gate, growling at a dog who was taking too long to get inside. Then he walked over and barked, Hey Maggie, how about a turn with your ball? Maggie opened her mouth to reply, and the ball fell to the ground and rolled over to Gus. She leaped over and pounced on the ball, accidentally knocking the old bulldog and waking him from his nap. Not right now, Sprinkles, Maggie told the little terrier. She picked up the ball and jogged over to the fence. Maggie never shares, Sprinkles huffed. He turned and scratched his back paws in the dirt to kick up dust in her direction. Rocky sat down next to Sprinkles and licked his paw. But it's Maggie's ball, he pointed out. His eyes grew big and serious. You don't want to get in trouble with Maggie's human. You know, Maggie's ball looks a lot like my ball, Gus said as he yawned in his spot under the tree. I have a red ball too. And I don't see it. Scout's ears perked in, Gur in Gus's direction. If Gus's ball was missing, then there might be a mystery to solve. Suddenly, Maggie dropped her ball and raised her head, sniffing the air. Treats! She barked. All of the dogs turned at once. Maggie's human was known for bringing treats for everyone. She sat on the bench near the park entrance with an open bag of pooch puffs. Dogs ran towards her from every direction. They barked with excitement, waiting for their snacks. Once the treat bag was empty, the dogs went back to the dusty play spot except Maggie, who had spotted her ball near the fence. But it didn't look the same. It was popped out of air, flat as a pancake. And that's where we're gonna stop for today.